and welcome everybody to the Out Now Weekly Wednesday webinar. Yeah. Hey, we, get our, we get our studio audience down here in Washington, D.C. We are broadcasting live this week from Washington, D.C. because we are in the midst of a really historic moment, a politically volatile moment for this country and honestly for the world. And there's no place that it is more important to be raising the demand. Trump pence out now than right here in the heart of the Capitol at the seat of power. And there's no time that's more important to be raising this, which we'll be talking about, um, a demand that the whole Trump Pence regime be removed from power. So we are in the midst of um, a historic impeachment. The articles of impeachment today were moved from the Congress over to the Senate, and we're looking at a Senate trial to actually determine whether or not Donald Trump should be removed from office, uh, scheduled to start within the next few days. This is very momentous. And we're gonna talk about what this means. This is coming at a moment also of tremendous volatility in the world. As we all know, um, just a few days ago, at the very beginning of this new year, new decade, Donald Trump um, assassinated a high ranking official of a sovereign country, Iran, inside yet another sovereign country, Iraq, without that country's permission. So this is a war crime that was done by Donald Trump. And it brought us right up against and to the brink of an all out military confrontation of a much greater magnitude. Um, and lives were lost because of what was set in motion by Donald Trump. The plane that came down, the Ukrainian plane, the passengers there, people who had done nothing wrong, nothing and in, no involvement in this. That This is what happens, um, but could have been much more. And Donald Trump not only carried out a uh, war crime, he threatened brazenly even more war crimes, bombing 52 sites of Iran, cultural sites, which is a war crime. It's a genocidal act of, of against the culture and really, a crime against humanity, if you think about the history of the world that is concentrated in Persia, in that region of the world. Um, so this is, and the, and the threat of military confrontation with Iran is not over. It's still simmering, it could still flare up. Um, and the sanctions that Donald Trump is escalating against Iran, what he had already called crippling sanctions, and now even more crippling sanctions, are going to cost lives of Iranian people and increase the suffering of Iranian people. So we're doing this at a time of, of brazen war crimes and threats of greater atrocity against the people of the world, and at a time when the fascist program of Trump-Pence is barreling ahead, and yet we've got a fight unfolding at the top of society in a way we haven't seen before. Now, I'm not somebody who thinks that the Democrats are gonna rush in and ride in on a white horse and rescue us from a fascist regime, but I do think it's extremely significant and important that they have impeached Donald Trump and they are fighting to put him on trial in the Senate and they're fighting for the evidence to come out around this. And this creates tremendous openings for the struggle from below. And we should be very attuned to, to the way that this could, we could impact on this situation. So we're gonna talk more about this and what the mission of Out Now is and the movement refusefascism.org. Um, to do this and to get us started, one thing I wanna say before this, we're gonna have somebody from the New York City chapter, but one thing I wanna say before this um, is that tonight we are here broadcasting from DC. We'll tell you more about what we're doing here and why we're here. And we're gonna call on you to come join us here um, we're also going to call on you to donate to the effort in DC. Um, we have people who have uprooted themselves. We need housing. We need uh, to feed them. We need to get the stickers around. You're going to see the spectacular bright orange t uh, uh, sweatshirts and t-shirts they've got. All that costs money. The materials we're getting out. We need you to donate. We have tonight a $1,000 match. So every donation up to $1,000 that is made during this webinar will be doubled. So I would like us by the end of this webinar to have raised $1,000, which will be doubled and be $2,000. It's gonna cost at least $10,000 to, to fund our outpost and work down here in DC during this Senate trial. I expect it'll probably be more than that because it's looking like this trial will go for a while. So we wanna get some seed money tonight through this webinar. And then we wanna be raising money the next few days and following weeks 
with building people up to sponsor a protester, sponsor an organizer, sponsor a volunteer, um, pledge a daily su uh, sustainer for people who are down here, or a one-time donation, and go to your friends and others that we've met in our work and that we're going to meet in the coming days to help support this. So I wanted to say right off the bat, to give a donation and to tell us a little bit more about Refuse Fascism and the Out Now movement and why he is part of it and also why he is donating and hopefully this will help inspire you to do the same. I wanna introduce somebody who is a member of the Refuse Fascism chapter up in New York. Um, his name is Christian and he got involved in the Out Now movement back in October when we first launched and he was part of it every week, coming back, coming back, coming back. and. He's taken more and more responsibility with the chapter and I heard him give a kick-ass speech at the last rally and I'm really excited to, to have him share some words with us all. So Christian. Uh, hi, world. Coming to you from New York. This is Christian. Uh, I'm with Refuse Fascism. Dot, I'm sorry, I don't know if you heard me first. I'm Christian. I'm with RefuseFascism.org. Um, I joined as somebody who's had no background in protest or direct pol uh, political action in late October, November, December, and I'm still with the Out Now movement and with RefuseFascism.org right now. Um, and I say that because we need, we need your support in terms of being out in the street, in terms of getting out to protest. You know, we, as part of Refuse Fascism, as part of the Out Now movement, we've been doing weekly protests um, at the at the end of 2019, and we're getting we're starting with them in January. Um, we did one last week on Saturday. We're going to do one uh, this coming Saturday in New York City. But right now, the main focus is DC. Um, we're sending people down uh, to DC, myself included, um, on Saturday uh, to to augment the women's march and also to make our voices heard uh, around these impeachment hearings. Um, I think it's pretty clear that these impeachment hearings are going to involve a lot of us making our voices heard. We've got to be on the streets because as Sansara said, this is a fight at the top of society, but we need to be pressing, you know, from below saying that this, that what Donald Trump has done is intolerable. I mean, it, it's obvious that he's obstructing justice. It's obvious that he abused his power. Witness after witness after witness has come forward to say that these are, these are career people. These are not, these are people under oath that are not, they can't, you know, can't be lying or else they go to jail. I'm, I, full disclosure, I uh, passed the bar in New York. So not that that really means much, but I'm a lawyer here or have been. Um, and, you know, right now, you know, these, this is a real window, this impeachment thing. This is a real window for us to amplify our voices. Like, you know, we've been on the streets consistently amplify our voice when we have a lawless fascist occupant of the White House and a Senate that even though it's in a very slim majority are basically saying that we're not even going to hold trial we're not even going to going to call witnesses we're not even going to bother we're just going to acquit him on pure political grounds knowing because it's obvious from the evidence and the witnesses and everything that's come out last year and this year that Trump has abused his power and it's quite obvious that he's been obstructing justice. He's obstructed justice every step of the way. If the situation was reversed and there was a Democratic president, the Republicans would be calling for blood. But in this case, they're supporting him to the death. And that's a scary thing. We've got one party that's willing to go along with a fascist program, with a fascist regime, that if you even engage just a little bit of critical thinking, you'll see that's what it is. I mean, and Donald Trump has shown that he doesn't care about what the American people think. He doesn't even care about what his base thinks when it really comes to his actions. I mean, he's been ripping up environmental protections. He's, we have a, he's a climate change denier along with other climate change deniers in the White House right now in a, in a time when our world is, is on the brink. I mean, it's, we're getting environmental disaster after environmental disaster and they're gonna get worse. We can't have climate change deniers in the White House. We can't have people who are gonna stop any degree of progress there. We have people in, in the White House and who are Christian fascists who believe that we should be a, a Christian fascist nation. And, in, and part of that program 
is saying that women shouldn't have the right to choose, that they shouldn't have a right to an abortion. They've come out and petitioned the Supreme Court to reevaluate Roe v. Wade, although I should say that Casey versus Planned Parenthood kind of all, has already chipped away at Roe v. Wade, but they want Roe v. Wade removed. They want the women's right to choose removed. And if Donald Trump is allowed to stay in the White House, you know, in, even through 2020, even, even until the election, there's some real threats that women could lose their right to choose, that environmental protections are going to continue to be ripped up, that the courts will be, can, continue to be packed with conservative ideologues that are in for life. We didn't vote for them. He just appointed them. You, you know, it's like who's – we're having our country, and but having our democracy, we're having, you know, our souls taken out from under us as a country. And he's – Donald Trump is emboldened authoritarians all over the world. I mean, it's obvious to me, at least, that he's been in Putin's pocket for a very long time, that, that he's been colluding with Putin and that he's a Putin, at very least a very Putin supporter. He's slagged off our allies all over the world. He's engaged now in hostile military actions without consulting Congress. I mean, who's to say a, a, a guy with the finger on the button like Donald Trump, who's shown that he only cares about himself, that's number, his number one priority. He doesn't care about anybody else. Even in his own family and his, his own allies, you look at his history. You know, and then, and then you have Mike Pence, a, 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 pardon my language, a Christian fascist right behind him. Mm -hmm. You know, we need these guys out. I mean, Donald Trump himself is a racist, sexist, you know, misogynist dinosaur. You know, he's put people in cages on the border. And, 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 and as if that's, as if that's okay, because mm -hmm. it's not American kids or not, you know, it's not okay at all for any kids to be in cages on the border. We can do something about it. Mm -hmm. People have been sent down there and sent away because we live in a fascist government that doesn't want you to help. That doesn't want, they want you under the thumb. And in order to not be under the thumb, in order to bring hope, you know, to Americans, because we've seen, People in 2019 rise up all over the world in Hong Kong. You know, you know the, the Chinese thought, oh yeah, you know during you know during this election, you know the you know the you know the uh, the reformers and and the Hong Kong protesters, their party are going to lose. Their party won huge in Hong Kong because they were out in the streets. In Puerto Rico, they got you know they 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 affected change of a of a hated government because they were out in the streets. There are numerous other examples of this. And you, you know, I, I'm, a, you know, you, you, you can look it up, but there are numerous other examples. We as Americans, we should have, we have a tradition of protest. You know, we should, we need to reignite that tradition of protest, you know, that we used to have. And unfortunately, you know, I know it's very, I mean, I have a, you know, it's difficult to donate your time. It's difficult to donate your money. We all have, you know, we live in a crazy world. We're all moving constantly, you know. You know, we're on our phones and at our jobs and, and doing things. But, you know, I keep putting in the time because this is important. Because it's 2020. This is a year where our voices are going to make a difference in deciding whether or not we continue as a democracy or we slide into full-on fascism. Because we couldn't have this webinar, you know, if we were in a full-on fascist state. And that's what Donald Trump and his enablers and, and fascists, fellow fascists want they don't want you to have a voice they don't want women to have a right to choose they don't want the, you know the majority of you know of of the country to have have a voice they want their voice to be the only voice and that's not acceptable so i'm going to be in dc refuse fashion that org's going to be in dc i think the tickets are about 20 bucks to get you know if you're in new york to get on the bus going down i'm sure there are other ways if you're in you know in in the area but we're going to be augmenting the women's march and i'm glad they're down there because as I, as I said before, and I will continue to say, women's right to choose is under attack. And we cannot let that happen because when you lose a right, it's much more difficult to gain a right than to lose it. That's you right, can't just right. wait till Roe v. Wade's gone until another Casey versus Planned Parenthood comes down, except worse, you know, that, you know, in, that, that takes our rights away. And, you know, and, and, as judge, and as the courts are packed with unelected judges who will take their whites away, who are, you know, anti-union, who are anti-labor, who are, you know, just in a lot of ways anti-American, in my opinion. So if you can be in D.C. with us, please do. Uh, obviously, Sansara, you know, is, 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 is going to be leading this webinar. And 
And, you know, she's got a lot of great things to say. She's been leading this from the beginning. This, you know, and, but right now, this is a pivotal moment. You know, we've had, we've had, you know, acts of, you know, violence abroad from a guy who's got his finger on the button and it's, it's clearly said that I'm the only one to choose, you know, and we have an impeachment hearing. So between those two things, I think people's ideas are being crystallized that this guy's got to go, that th this is a real problem. And we can't necessarily wait till the end of 2020, because even if he's to elect out of office, he's said that he'll just consider that an invalid election. So we've got to learn to be on the streets. We've got to learn to get him out of there, to make our voices heard, to bring hope to other people. Go to refusefasses.org, hashtag out now, please use it. If you have anything to say, you know, social media is a useful tool, certainly in this age to get our message out. You can go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, out now, or Refuse Fascism, refusefascism.org. Um, and you know what? Let's get them out. <laughs> yes. yeah. Don't wait. Okay, Christian, before, before you uh, step away from the camera, I want to let you and everybody know that we got, while you were speaking, we got from a Hawaii, somebody in Hawaii, a supporter of Refuse Fascism in Hawaii is donating $100. Yeah. They said it's hard for us to get to DC, but we want to support those of you who are down there. So Thank you. if we can get $900 more this evening, every donation will be matched. So that 100 will become 200. If you can do what Christian just said about it cost $20 and 20 cents to get on the bus from New York City to buy a bus ticket. Um, if you're not in New York City, or if you are and you want to sponsor an extra seat, give $20 and 20 cents right now. If you can give $200, give $200 right now. We want to get to $900. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, can you hear me? Yeah, I was going to throw it to you. Go ahead. Tell what you want to do and ask others to do the same. Yeah, I'm going to throw in $60 from me right now. And I've thrown in money before and I'm going to continue to do so. I mean, I work so I, you know, support myself and support the people I care about, but also so I can support causes that I care about. And this is a cause that I care very greatly about. And just to add one before I, I go, um, you know, I have, an, I have a nephew and a niece on the way in February. And a lot of what I'm doing isn't just for me, but it's for them because I don't want them to grow up in a world where they're less free than, than we are now and where they live in, 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 a, in an environment that is on the brink of collapse, you know, where, the, you know, where, where, they're, where we live in an unequal society with people, with people losing hope. You know, I'm doing this so I can say, you know, as they grow up, you know, I was there, you know, and we all have people we care about and we need to be able to say that we were there when it mattered. So that's why I'm donating and part of what I'm doing, I'm doing so, thanks. Hey, we got eighty more dollars from somebody here in New York. Oh yeah. All right. Do you want to tell her that? All right. We got eighty more dollars. We got eighty more dollars from somebody here in New York already. So eighty more dollars yeah. in the room. So, this is bringing us up to a total of two hundred and forty dollars raised so far tonight. Two hundred and sixty. Two hundred and sixty. Which will become five hundred and twenty if we raise. 900 and no not 900 well we should raise 900 more but if we raise 740 more dollars tonight so we are off to a good start we've got 260 dollars we've got somebody here in the room wiping tears out of their eyes listening to you speak christian um and we're gonna i want to let you know how you can donate because i know there's people watching going yeah i want to donate i want to be like christian i want people in dc saying trump pence out now in the middle of this crisis and organizing others to do the same. So go to donate.refusefascism.org. If you're watching on Facebook or online or however you're watching, open up your phone, open up another tab, donate.refusefascism.org. Or you can use Venmo. It's at refuse-fascism on Venmo, at refuse-fascism. Please put a little note letting us know you're donating so we can tally this throughout the night. Um, everybody should give something. What, I, what would really make a difference is to get to $1,000 tonight by involving a lot of new people. So if you make a donation right now, then go on your Facebook, even while we're doing this stream, and do it afterwards to Twitter or Instagram and say, I just gave $25.
here's why you should do the same. Oh, here's up here. Do you want to mute this for a second? So the credit, um, spreading and getting more people involved in donating and supporting this. So um, what we want to do next is I want to, um, okay, let me say a couple things that we're going to bring Chantelle on for a moment. Um, I think Christian just gave a really good breakdown on the, the fascist program of Trump and Pence and why it must be stopped. And he also said something very important, which was about how Trump has made clear that if he loses the elections, he might not respect that. And he's, lots of people close to him have said this. Michael Cohen, his, his old lawyer and personal fixer said, you know, I don't believe Trump will go peacefully. Um, Anonymous, who wrote the New York Times exposure, the high, high ranking Trump administration official came out and said, you know, Trump has already been calling uh, the elections rigged. He's already been raising that if he loses, it'll be a hoax. This is preparing people, his supporters and others, to not accept an, a loss, even if he does lose in the election. So we have to take that very seriously. And this is part of the qualitative nature of fascism. Fascism has a, a fascist program that destroys people's lives, immigrants, women's rights, the people of the world, the environment, all the things that Christian was talking about the white supremacy, the harm it does to whole sections of people, devastating harm. It also is a qualitative change in the form of government such that it shuts down the space in society for people to stand up and resist it in the streets, in the courts, he's remaking the courts, and even in the halls of power. This is what it means when Trump is saying about Adam Schiff who led the impeachment, um, you know, we could handle him in Guatemala. They know how to handle him like if people like him invoking torture and assassination. This is what it means when he gets his crowds to chant lock her up about his political rivals. This is what it means when he stood before the world as he did after he assassinated one of the high ranking officials of Iran and blamed Obama for Iran's actions and put Obama and the Democrats as that level of enemy of the people he had just assassinated. You are, this is bringing about and, and building up a different form of rule. And he says these things now and people say they find it shocking, but they dismiss it because it's so outrageous. But it's actually a program and he's moving it along. And we, that's the point of fascism it has to be stopped before it's too late. So the point of refuse fascism and the out now movement is to build up protests from below, as Christian also said, akin to what we've seen in Lebanon or Chile or Puerto Rico or around the world where from below people do a different kind of protest, not just one day and go home, but come back again and again and raise the demand that Trump Pence regime must go now, out now. It's a unifying demand that can actually unite all the different streams of struggle, all the different perspectives and different issues that are close and dear to people's hearts that can unite people from very different perspectives. Christian talked about he believes Trump is betraying America and what America stands for. And this movement can unite him and me who thinks that Trump is a concentration of what America stands for. Slavery, genocide, xenophobia, white supremacy. I think that's as American as apple pie and I'm fighting for a revolution to go even beyond driving out the regime. This is very important, but we can come together because no future that he wants to see, no future that I wanna see, no future that anybody decent wants to see is possible if this fascism gets consolidated. So this single unifying demand can bring us together and it's also the, what is needed for a future that any of us want. So this is what we're fighting to build a struggle from below around. And we've been at it actually for a couple of years now and in, intensely, we launched a new run at this in October, and we've been going at it and going at it and gathering new people, but we haven't broken out in the kind of qualitative growth, the kind of breakout uh, geometric growth that we need yet. But now we're in a moment where a lot is in play, and the impeachment has begun, and the normalcy is melting away, the normalization has melting away from a lot of people, and the Women's March is happening right in DC, right in the middle of this. And it's very important. So I want to bring Chantel to read the special statement that we are going to be distributing all over the country at the Women's March, including here in DC. And if you don't know, this is Chantel. You may remember her. She was part of the LA 
uh, LA5, LA9, Freeway 9, Freeway 9 um, who was on trial for putting her body on the line, shutting down the freeway, calling on people to come into the streets um, and drive out the Trump-Pence regime. And she's, we're going to ask her some questions later, but for now, she's going to read the statement that we're, she's here in DC from LA to mm -hmm. volunteer. So she's one of the people you'll be supporting with your donations. And we got a few more. I'll read them in a second. But why don't you read this statement and then we'll come back around. Sure. Um, I am reading a statement. Um, so right now we are at a crucial crossroads. What we decide to do can determine the future. Trump has been impeached and faces a Senate trial over removal, widening divides throughout society. Now is the time for determined struggle by the people to go all the way to demand Trump Pence out now. Trump carries out a brazen war crime by assassinating high-ranking official of Iran, threatening and threatening more. He reminds the world that the dangerous bully heading a fascist regime has an itchy Twitter finger on the nuclear button. The danger of all-out war remains, even as Trump's sanctions intensify the suffering of the Iranian people. Every day, the Trump-Pence regime remains in power, threatens the future of humanity and the planet. Concentration camps on the border, environmental devastation accelerated, war, even nuclear war, threatened. White supremacist rule, fascist mobs and racist mass murders, truth and science, um, being erased, the rights to abortion near gone, the rule of law and democratic and civil rights being stripped away. This is fascism unfolding. Everyone with a conscience must face this hard truth, but it, that is not enough. We must act on it. Look around today at all of us marching across the country. The deep yearning to see Trump removed from power, visible on our signs, our faces, and in people's hearts, to see the nightmare he represents in the rear view of history. Our power is the power of the people acting with determination in the streets, but not by protesting one day and going home. We must flood the streets in mass sustained nonviolent protests with people of many different points of view acting together to stop a catastrophe for humanity. Starting in our hundreds, soon becoming thousands and ultimately millions, refusing to stop until the whole Trump-Pence regime is removed, including the Christian fascist Pence, um, all with the single unifying demand, Trump-Pence out now. Especially now, this could intensify the kind of political crisis in this country that compels the removal of the regime. The impeachment of Trump is a real advance. The cracks and the strains in our political class are sharper and more visible. People, people are restive with dread and hope. Now is a moment to seize, building mass, sustained, nonviolent protests, demanding the removal of the whole regime. This is an example of people all over the world taking to the street against hated regimes. We should do no less. We must not return to business as usual. We must not repeat the pattern of the last three years where righteous protest against each new atrocity was followed by a return to normalcy as fascism advanced. Nor can we rely on the 2020 election, an election which is likely neither to be fair nor whose verdicts will necessarily be honored by Trump. His threats to lock up political rivals, massive voter suppression, and the racist electoral college are real. In addition to horrors Trump inflicts on humanity in the time between now and the elections, we cannot gamble the future on Trump's willingness to peacefully leave office, even if voted out. These are not normal times. This is not a normal president or regime. The normal channels of redress will not suffice, especially as Trump and his regime shred them apart. But there are deep cracks throughout all of society, including among the powers that be. Urgently, what is needed, impossible now, is a different kind of protest, sustained and growing each week. 
uh, making advances and becoming a magnetic force for all who increasingly feel the Trump-Pence regime represents an existential danger and threat to humanity. Out now is a single unifying demand that everyone can take up across different perspectives, geographies, and righteous streams of struggle and be out in the streets. Together, let's turn dread and fear for the future into a force for hope. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept the fascist America. Trump, Pence, out now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we just got, um, first of all, thank you for reading that, mm. Chantel. And I'm, we're, gonna, we're gonna ask Chantel a couple questions. She's been here a little minute now in DC. Um, but yeah, stick around. Um, but uh, I wanna let you know, an attorney in Chicago has given $100. I wanna thank you. Yes. There are two other $10 donations from Chicago. So that's beautiful. And each of those gets doubled. Somebody went from Northern California and gave a donation for a bus ticket, $20.20 to start the 2020 year off. Um, and then somebody else gave an unspecified amount and so far, the total that we're at is $445 raised during this webinar towards the $1,000 match. So we're almost halfway there. If somebody gives $55 right now, or if uh, five people, yeah. if 10 people give 550, watch me do math live. <laughs> if you, if you want to see, give an odd number and you'll get the kick of watching me try to compute it while we're live. Um, but if we Someone get- Someone did just get 50, so. Yeah. Okay, we need five more dollars to get halfway. We're at 495. We actually need $505 to get to our $1,000 match. That is the facts. And um, hey, it's true. Um, and we're gonna do it. We have really good momentum. So please, you know, if you haven't yet, make a donation. And again, spread it on social media. Maybe Raphael off camera, you could put, an ask for donations, a simple pitch on our Twitter so everybody can retweet it if you're on Twitter. Um, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna let Raphael get a minute to do that. And um, I wanna bring Sarah into the conversation. Sarah Rourke from our National Editorial Board, zooming in live from New Zealand. How you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Great, great to have you with us. So, um, I want to just throw it open to you to make a comment on this on this moment and on the challenge that we're facing and and then we'll have some conversation about it. Okay, well, I mean, um, actually, uh, it's great that you didn't call on me until after after Christian and uh, and Chantel were done speaking because uh, I have new inspiration um, to to bounce off of and. Uh, First of all, let me say to you guys in DC, I love you, I wish I was with you, and uh, be safe. And, um, you know, I'm gonna be doing everything I can to try and raise awareness from uh, over the sea here and raise money and stuff. Um, this moment is, it is a crucial moment. And I'm speaking here as what, what has been sort of the, the token Democrat uh, in, in the leadership for refused fascism, but that it, it that's starting to change. Um, the, the movement is broadening out, uh, which is a wonderful thing to see. And we're seeing more people um, uh, from different places across the left. Ultimately, I'd like to see people, you know, even uh, conscientious conservatives um, who've been speaking out against Trump, but not yet stepping up to protest in the way that we know is going to be necessary. Uh, I think some of them can be be moved to come and be with us because their their fears for the future of the United States under Trump, even if they don't match exactly the same understanding that I have, they get the depth of that threat and they get that that nothing that deep, decent people want for humanity can happen under fascism. So um, to that, the point that that I'd like to make uh, from from what everybody's been saying is is to emphasize this nothing that we want for humanity can happen under a fascist regime. Fascists don't fix things. History teaches us this. Um, and I strongly encourage everybody to, you know, do what reading you can uh, on fascism. There's some book recommendations and stuff that we can make uh, 
and video uh, explainer videos and things like that. But uh, the thing is that on the left, we've had a problem for the last generation or so, less, maybe less, that we've started to view this as kind of a competition among ourselves. Uh, instead of looking at what we all need to further all these worthy causes, we act as though we're constantly competing for finite donor dollars, finite public attention, finite emotional energy from our fellow Americans and people around the world. And we're going to need to get out of that, that mindset because what is going on now threatens all of us. Rarely in life are things this simple, but every once in a while something comes up and fascists are it. You Fascists are not going to fix climate change. Trump has made this clear. If you want climate change fixed, it needs the United States pitching in. If you want the United States pitching in, it's not going to happen with Trump and Pence in power. End of story. Uh, if you are wanting to get children out of cages that are still in cages, Trump is not going to take them out of the cages. He has to go first. If you want to see trans rights that are being stripped away, restored, or women's right to choice being restored and protected, that's not going to happen under these guys. So when I advocate as a Democrat um, and a fairly mainstreamish one at that, when I am telling both my friends and people to the left of me, people to the right of me, that they need to be out in the street without now, they need to be out in the street with refused fascism. I'm not saying screw climate change. I'm not saying screw your work for immigrant rights. I'm not even saying screw your right for ex-Democrats campaign. All the folks that are working on this stuff are doing beautiful, important work that I want to see succeed. So if we want that to succeed, we have to support them by removing the regime that is standing in the way of all of it. Um, so again, this is not a competition and people will tend to view it that way. When you go to them and, and say, come out with me into the streets, you might get some pushback along the lines of, well, I'm going to do work that's, that's really important and effective. And it's important not to get drawn into arguments about whose work is important and effective because humanity is important. Uh, the planet is important. The, these are the things that are important. Decency and the rule of law and democracy are important. That's what we're trying to save here. And like I said, what we are doing is one piece of the puzzle, but it's not a piece that can be skipped. You can't get any of this done with a fascist regime in power. And that's just what it comes down to. Um, uh, as to the moment with the impeachment uh, and, and the war, um, with impeachment, again, there are arguments on the left among what, for instance, Pelosi should be doing or Schiff or, or Schumer or, um, you know, what the timing should be and, and all these kinds of things. And uh, uh, I've had some uh, very interesting discussions with people about that. And people have a, a, a broad breadth of opinions on this subject. But what we don't need to argue about is that we need to have the support of the people behind any formal effort to remove Trump. He's made clear he doesn't respect the rule of law. Even Pelosi has said she doesn't think he'll respect the election results unless they're overwhelming. Well, guess what we're not on track to get? An overwhelming victory. You wanna see an overwhelming victory? Let's get out in the streets, nonviolently. Let's make that mass movement happen. Let's wake people up and, and you know, set them on fire with, with zeal for humanity uh, and to use nonviolent struggle to, to end this nightmare. That is what is going to get people activated in all the different ways that they need to be activated. That's what's gonna put muscle behind an impeachment push. That's what's going to, to help ensure a free and fair election and let the Republicans know that we're not going to tolerate anything less. No matter what aspect of the problem you're trying to tackle, us in the streets on a sustained, disruptive, nonviolent basis is going to put power behind those demands. So that, that is the case that we're, we're gonna be going out 
and, and making to people in DC as this impeachment proceeds um, and as, uh, as things go, as things go forward, um, and we, we still don't know what's going to develop out of the Iraq hostilities. We don't, do know that what he did is an is a, is a illegal assassination um, and that he's threatened war crimes uh, and crimes against cultural sites. So we, it's already gone to a bad place. You don't have to ask yourself if the struggle with, uh, if the tensions with Iran have gone to a bad place. They're already there. Um, and that too, he will not respect our will unless we are demanding. So anyway, uh, that, that was the main, those were the thoughts that came to me as I was, I was listening to the other speakers, um, um, beautiful words and, and beautiful and wise words and definitely take everything that they said in and, and uh, take that forward with you in the next, into the next few weeks in, this, in DC and, and beyond hopefully in New Zealand too. I'll, I'll be doing what I can over here. There's some, there's some protests happening, so. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm hoping you'll stick around and, and feel free to chime in uh, as we, I'm gonna bring some other people in, but if you wanna ask a question or make a comment, stick with us, it'd be great. Um, I wanna let you know that the tally right now, I want to thank Linda, who gave a $50 donation, Cheryl, who gave $20.20 for 2020, um, mm -hmm. an anonymous donor who gave $50. Currently, the total of what we have raised is $650. I want to give a shout out to everybody who donated $650. I believe that puts us within striking range pretty confidently of $1,000 by the end of this webinar. Um, the webinar is scheduled to go another 20 minutes, so we have about 20 minutes to raise $350, which then all of it will be doubled. And we will have raised $2,000 tonight, and this is really important because we have people on the ground right now in D.C. Come get in the camera. Come on, people on the ground in D.C. Get in the camera. <laughs> you too. Just for a minute. Just for a minute. All right, here we go. Okay, she's here. Just for a minute. There you go. All right, we're on the ground. Sophie, who's a leader in our Refuse Fascism chapter here in DC that we're gonna help strengthen and build while we're here. Um, Amina, who is actually working the camera off screen. You can go back to what you were doing. We appreciate that. Raphael, uh, who came down from New York and is part of the National Get Organized for an Actual Revolution Tour. Chantel, who came out from LA, who's part of the LA9, um, Freeway 9. Uh, <laughs> Not guilty, victorious. We're gonna talk a little bit about what she learned through that trial and, and had some insights for the impeachment. She's also a member of the Revolution Club as well as a leader in Refuse Fascism out in LA. So these people are here on the ground. I'm here on the ground. There's more people coming. Come in closer. Um, there's more people coming down and we need to support and sustain these volunteers and many more. We want next week, um, it, it, predictions are that the hearing, the trial will start on Tuesday. We want people to come for the Women's March in DC and stay, and stay on the ground here. I would like to see us have dozens of volunteers here. This is gonna cost a lot of money. It means you should think about getting a plane ticket and coming here. It means you should talk to the people you know, the students who maybe have time still off in January, who've been around your chapter, who you've met as you've gone out, um, to come down here and be part of this crew. I also want to say, you heard this, um, and I have one more comment before we open it up and we talk a little bit here. Um, when Chantel read the statement that we're going to put out and massively distribute on Saturday at the Women's March all over the country, we need to distribute tens of thousands of copies of this statement. It's a big embrace. It's a big shout out to people who are standing up at this time. It's a very pivotal time. We're coming right in the middle of the impeachment hearing. And we know every time there's been a women's march, the, let's be honest, the leadership of the women's march has been oriented towards the elections and they've been oriented towards getting people to register and they've been oriented towards the normal channels, even as Trump and Pence and the regime are shredding the normal channels and making clear they won't respect them. So this is a program that will go nowhere on its own. But 
the people who come out at the Women's March are coming out because they hate to see children in cages because they don't want women to lose the right to abortion and even birth control. They're coming out because they care about climate change and the fate of the planet and Australia on fire and what is gonna happen to our children all over the world. And these people need to be embraced, they need to be united with, they also need to be challenged with the statement that we put out. It's a very well-written statement, it's a very good statement that unites with their spirit, but also poses, there's two roads ahead of us. We've seen the movie play out. Three years of Donald Trump in power, of his regime in power, where people protest a, a, a gross atrocity, they pour into the streets against the Muslim ban, or against child separation, or against the white supremacist murders and marching in Charlottesville. They pour into the streets, and then they go home, and the atrocity gets normalized, and it goes on, and it becomes the new normal, and fascism advances and does another atrocity. And children are still in cages, and the Muslim ban is in effect, and the environmental protections are being shredded, and every day it gets worse, and normalcy has returned. And we, it, this statement we're putting out, it says we cannot repeat this pattern. We need to take the energy in the streets today. And this time we have to do what people around the world are doing, mm -hmm. which is to stay in the streets. And it lays out a program. The Refuse Fascism has put this out, the Out Now movement, to take up this demand and stay in the streets and organize with us. With your other organization, don't drop your demands. Raise this alongside of it. If you're on your own, come into this. If you're part of another movement, bring this demand into your movement, but this has got to be taken up. And so we're going to bring this message into the Women's March to, as, as Christian said, to augment that march, but also to influence that march and to struggle with that, the people at the march and to try to divert the pattern so that people don't go back to normalcy. And especially now when things are breaking open with impeachment, when there's volatility, that we wrench this in a different direction. And we've got a running start, let's be honest, we've been at this. We didn't get as far as we wanted to get through the Out Now protest we launched in October week after week, but we did build chapters. We did build cores. We have met people who are attracted to this. We need to fight now for all of them to join us, everybody we can get with us to join us at these contingents so we have a very big impact on the people who come out on Saturday so that, we re so that they see the orange everywhere. They get the stickers, they get this statement, they get signed up and they get invited to march with us next week. We're doing um, theater marches into the nationwide anti-war protests. We want them to come with us off the Women's March and come back next week. Then we're having mass meetings all over the country on the 26th. We wanna invite people to come on the 26th in a mass meeting. We'll have a dimension of a speak out, strategizing together so that we, this doesn't die down. And in February, we go forward even more. So we're, we really wanna build the DC contingent during the impeachment and that's what we're gonna talk about next. But I'm putting a call out to you. If you're watching this, join the Out Now contingent at the Women's March. And also work to reach back to everybody you've met to get on the bus to come to DC if you can or in the van from Philly to DC if you can, or if you, I see somebody say they're bringing the Out Now contingent to Lansing, Michigan, march with this contingent in Lansing, Michigan, march with this contingent in Chicago, but bring this message and let's really grow through this. This is what humanity needs from us. So I see we got a, a $20 donation from Detroit, which will be doubled. So right now we are at $670 that has been raised. $670 has been raised. We need to raise $330 more. Thank you. I'm getting confirmation <laughs> that the math was correct. Um, we need $330 more in the next 15 minutes. So we need to get a few more donations. It's donate.refusefascism.org. Donate.refusefascism.org. Give $10. Give $30. Give $50, give $100. Let's go over the top. Let's do more than $1,000. At Venmo, it's Venmo. It's at refuse-fascism. On Venmo, you can donate by going to at refuse-fascism. And now I'd like to spend the remainder of our time talking with this crew here. Um, so I want to throw it open first to Raphael. To, to, I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, First, maybe you could just share 
what are the articles of impeachment? Just for people in case you don't know or you sort of, you know, everybody's talking about it, it's hard to keep up with it. What are the articles of impeachment and why do they matter? Okay, well, um, the articles of impeachment, as Christian said, are abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. And I can say a bit about what that's about in a second. But I did want to start by saying, you know, I, I don't think people quite <laughs> realize the, the historic moment we're in. Actually, um, we talked to a reporter from Switzerland today. There's actually people from all over the world here in DC and reporters from all over the world. But we talked to a woman from Switzerland, a journalist, and she said, you know, a couple of things. One, she said that, uh, you know, Trump is emboldening fascism and right-wing extremism all over the world, including in her country. Um, but, uh, you know, she basically also was raising the question of, where are the protesters in America? Like, I don't think, she said, I don't think people here realize what's going on. Your president is on trial, right. <laughs> you know? And I think people have to realize there's a, a fascist criminal is on trial right now. And we have, a, we have an opportunity right now to like actually bring the type of mass protest from below that can change the whole equation. Because right now, it's not looking good for Trump to be convicted because the Repu as we all know, the Republicans control the Senate. But that can change. That can change both because of what comes out during the trial, but it can also come, it can also change, especially through what we do, through masses of people out in the streets, protesting, demanding Trump Pence out. Now imagine, you know, after the Women's March, if thousands of people came out like, day after day and it was actually growing you know and it was growing and you know maybe at a certain point trump would decide hey i'm gonna you know mobilize my supporters you know and they started you know marching in in dc also but then imagine if people instead of being intimidated by that came out even stronger because they saw you know how you know dangerous this whole not just Trump per se as an individual, but the whole fascist movement that he's unleashed, the whole regime that he's uh, appointed and is now in power carrying out, you know, atrocities. And just in terms of what, uh, you know, what's at stake, it's, it's, you know, in terms of a fascist criminal being on trial, you know, it's true that, that uh, Trump is, is not being charged for concentration camps with her horrific conditions. I mean, they're, you know, children are dying on concrete floors because they don't have, you know, they're not, and they're denying people flu vaccines. They're denying doctors the ability to even give people flu vaccines. So people are dying. Women are being told to drink out of toilet bowls. They're being sexually assaulted. You know, they're being beaten, physically assaulted. Uh, this is the kind of thing that's going on. This is, these are crimes against humanity. He's not being charged for, you know, ripping up a hundred environmental regulations, which as Christian was saying, we are already on the brink of environmental catastrophe and he's doing all this and appointed a regime full of climate change deniers. All of this is not just a crime against this generation of humanity, but is really a crime against future generations of humanity as well. Um, he's not being impeached for the Muslim ban, you know, and he explicitly said, uh, you know, that this, that he wanted a total and complete ban on Muslims. And now that the ban is in effect with some slight variations, all the things that Sansar and Christian talked about in terms of stripping away rights from women, from transgender people, um, unleashing white supremacy and mass murder in El Paso and Charlottesville and Pittsburgh, anti-Semitism, all these are crimes against humanity. But he is actually being charged with abuse of power, with obstruction of Congress um, for what he did in Ukraine, you know, which was a crime. He basically gangster extortion of using your power as the president to engage in extortion, you know, pressuring another government to, you know, with the threat of withholding military funding. This is actually what he did. It's there's a lot of evidence for it, evidence that they right now want to block from even getting into this trial. Um, and this is, this, you know, what he's actually being charged with does have a lot to do with the fascist nature of this regime. It has a lot to do with a president that thinks he's above the law. Do you want to mention yeah. the second article? Yeah, the second ar yeah. Ar article, Obstruction of Congress, speaking of yeah. thinking you're 
uh, above the law. Trump instructed, you know, Republicans and his people in his administration and others to uh, not comply with subpoenas. That's actually instructing mm -hmm. people to break the law. Um, so, you know, again, we're in it back to the point about if we think we can rely on the normal way forms of redress, if we think we can rely, rely, rely on elections, if we think we can rely on politics as usual to stop someone who actually thinks he's above the law, you know, we're fooling ourselves. And the Democrats are trying to constrain Trump. They are actually trying to constrain him and it's significant um, that he was impeached in the House. This was a blow to Trump. Trump just the other day said this, you know, was complaining about how unfair it is that he's got this stigma of impeachment attached to him. And like Nancy Pelosi said, that's with him for life. He's the third president. However, we don't just, you know, humanity, the people in the concentration camps, the people all over the world that are worried about it, this trigger happy fascist lunatic, you know, with the nuclear codes, like they don't just need a stigma attached to Trump. They need him out. We yeah. need him out. Everyone that, you know, so mm -hmm. this is, this is where we come in to change this whole equation. And there's a lot that could come out through the course of this trial. This is why McConnell and others want to prevent witnesses from even testifying. Um, Trump just the other day after, you know, Trump has been arguing, by the way, that, you know, this impeachment trial should be used to actually put the Democrats on trial to go after the Bidens to go after Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi, you know, which is ridiculous. That's like as if the defendant in a court of law decided that he was actually gonna prosecute the prosecutor. You, you, that's yeah. not how a, a, a legal case actually works. Um, and the people who were actually supposed to be the jury in this case, people like um, Mitch McConnell and the other Republicans are openly collaborating with the accused, with Donald Trump and saying that they already, they're supposed to be listening to uh, the evidence and, you know, trying to make an impartial decision, but they're already saying, well, we know Trump, um, you know, is not going to be convicted and this whole trial should go away, you know, and that they're not acting like a jury. So again, this is where we, the people, are so important in terms of changing this whole equation. It doesn't, his, you know, people need to break with the, the resignation that things are just gonna go down the way that they look like they're gonna go down now, which is Trump getting acquitted and then maybe even being further emboldened to carry out his fa fascist agenda. But it doesn't have to go down like that, you know, and there's, it's a very unpredictable situation and there's a lot of variables and you know who's going to testify? What's going to come out? Are Repu will Republic will any Republicans break break ranks? How strongly will the Democrats actually fight this? Those are really important questions. But the most important question is: Will there be a force of people on the on the ground here in D.C. and yes, all across the country, but especially here in D.C. because the eyes of the world are on D.C. Um, standing up and. The last thing, just real quick, I'll say is that we, we've been here um, just a, a day today and um, we met a lot of people. We met a group of students from South Korea who actually participated in the protest there a few years ago that forced their president out through mass nonviolent protests, like what we're calling here. Um, everywhere we go, our people come up to us with our t shirts and our sweatshirts, and you can go get these if you go to refusefascism.org. Um, and make a, you know, make a donation and a payment. Um, but what's really missing are the protesters. You know, there's, there was like six people out in front of the Capitol today, you know, and these are six people who, you know, it's interesting that someone just got on a plane from Santa Barbara and made a sign and just came to stand in front of the Capitol. Another guy made a sign he's demanding that the witnesses be heard. Um, so a professor from New York City just got on a bus today to come down to join join our crew. And so these are like the seeds of what needs to happen. But, you know, these, we need to flood DC. So that's all I'll say. Okay, so let me just, um, I want to pull one thing out of uh, what you were saying, a few things out of what you were saying, and then I have a question for Chantel. Um, which is, I think it's, you were, you were talking about what, the full fascist program is, 
that was not brought into the impeachment. Mm -hmm. It is on narrow grounds, but that should not obscure the fact that what he is being impeached over are actual crimes that do matter that right. he be held accountable for. Right. And, you know, we should not, just because, look, I don't care if you love Joe Biden or hate Joe Biden, you think his kid is a good guy or a schmuck, you know, honestly, I don't care. What Trump did to actually blackmail, gangster-like threaten, now it's coming out today that this woman, Yovanovitch, has, yeah. has essentially stalked and 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 threatened and intimidated there's a tremendous amount that is coming out now um more and more frankly um about the violations and the and the fascist character of trump in what he did in ukraine um so that's the the abuse of power then there's the um obstruction of congress which is actually that he is violated and refused to participate in the trial and in the in the hearings in the house and they he's refused to give over documents he's refused to let people testify he's invoked you know arbitrarily uh, executive privilege to to keep people silent he's done so much to obstruct that the democrats and i think this was correct said well okay we're going to charge you we're going to make this part of the impeachment it wasn't the original hearing but but it was such an abuse it was such an obstruction it was such a violation of the separation of powers and the rule of law that they made it into an article of impeachment and those two things do concentrate not everything but they concentrate a lot and it matters that this is is being that he's being held to account for this and just like Raphael said we should not have any resignation that it's just going to go down the way the republicans want it to because if you if you scroll back, you like you put rewind on the tape for a few weeks. Um, a couple months ago, it looked like there wasn't going to be any impeachment at all. And you could be resigned. Oh, the Democrats, they'll never do this. Well, there's a lot of reasons they didn't want to go down this road. But then there was other reasons that even despite the risks involved in it for them, they felt compelled to do so. And so there's a, a lot of reasons to see why it might go the way that de the Republicans want it to go. It's also the future is unwritten and there's a lot at play. So this brings me to the question I wanted to ask Chantel, <laughs> um, who was right before we came on this broadcast. <coughs> oh, I have to tell you, we got, we seem to be at $790 that we've gotten in. Yeah. $790, yeah. we have $210 to go. We're gonna stay on a little bit longer because we have more to talk about and we need to get $210. I know there's somebody watching who could give $210. I know there is. And you know what, if you give 210, I think it would inspire others to give. So don't worry that if you give it, it will you know, prevent somebody else from making a donation. <laughs> uh, we need to get to a thousand, it'll become $2,000. We have $210 to go. If what you can do is give $12, you should give $12. If you can give $50, give $50. If you can do the whole 210, do the whole 210. If you're watching this and you know that it's gonna cost many thousands of dollars to be in DC and stay here and build our, gather the people Raphael was talking about that are starting to come, the ones and twos, but really make a leap through the Women's March. We're also gonna have a one hour radio special on the local radio show here tomorrow. I'll be hosting on WPFW Pacifica. We can reach more people that way. We're gonna be growing this. It's gonna cost money. You have resources. If you're somebody who has enough that you could pledge a $500 match or a $1,000 match for our next webinar, please consider doing that or line somebody up for this because we're gonna to need to continue this going forward. So keep giving $210 to go for tonight. And Chantel, here's the question I wanted to ask you is, in terms of the future being unwritten, right before we came on the, the webinar, you were saying, yeah, you learned so much because you were on trial. Yeah. And that when a trial starts to unfold, um, a lot gets dragged out. Mm -hmm. And no one can say how it's actually going to play out. So I wanted to give you a chance to kind of share some of what you learned and, and reflect on, the, yeah. on, on this impeachment trial. Yeah, so, and it didn't even occur to me in this light, and like Roth was talking about it too, it's like, 
yeah, when you go through a trial, you think, you think it's going to go one way or you have ideas about how it's going to go. And even sitting through my own, you know, things come up, people say things they don't mean to say, like lawyers ask questions that provoke certain responses and then it delves them into asking questions they ever thought about asking and new evidence comes to light and more people step forward. And so there actually, there is so much opportunity during this trial and it's going to mean a lot and it does mean a lot that there are people here on the ground in DC um, so that we can react and we can, you know, be, because the amount of press, you know, that is going to be here, it's going to be so important that there is a force of people here calling for what we're calling for during this and reacting with our understanding of, you know, how the forces are acting, like why the Democrats you know, you know what they're facing throughout this and what the Republicans are facing and what Trump, what Trump's motives are throughout all this too, like understanding that this is a fascist regime um, and how important it is that he gets removed, you know, and what it'll mean to throughout the people that we met today, even like this, what it'll mean to the people of the world if there is a huge force of people protesting in the streets to join in this demand. Because like Ralph was saying earlier, and like I've met people even before today that are like, what's wrong with Americans, you know? And it even clicked today with that reporter we were talking to. It's like, this is momentous, you know? This is a crazy time in history where, you know, the president could be impeached and you can't write it off now. It's, it's not decided. There's a whole trial ahead of us and who knows how long this will be. Even today, there is new things coming up, you know? So don't write this off there's still hope to actually remove Trump. And then we can use that momentum to go after the whole regime with people in the streets um, and making this our demand. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I that's it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's important. <laughs> I think that's it. Donate. <laughs> yeah, don't, say the last part. Of what Donate. We're Listen, if to, we still need 210 more dollars. We're gonna talk to Sophie next. Yeah. Um, but we need to, don't go away, you guys, we're all together. You look so good in the orange. <laughs> and we need to see that orange. Um, we need 210 more dollars. And if you wanna give, you go to donate.refusefascism.org. That's donate.refusefascism.org. We could get that if two people gave 100 and somebody gave 10. Um, we need, if you wanna give on Venmo, it's at refuse-fascism, at refuse-fascism. Um, and please go make a donation right now. We need 210 more dollars to before we close out this webinar. It will get us to $1,000. It'll be doubled, it'll be $2,000. We really need to start this out with some seed money, not by going in debt, okay? It's always better that way. We got $20.20. Somebody gave a donation to help cover a bus ticket from New York City, that's beautiful. So we now need, I'm not doing this since math, okay? We now need $190, okay? We actually need $180.89.80, just to prove I can do it. A hundred and we need a hundred and ninety dollars. See, that's like a, a joke to them. They're all laughing. Um, so, Sophie, you are here. Yes. You're part of the um, DC sort yes. of embryo of a chapter that yes. that is struggling to to grow here. But also, you've been involved in the protests. I wanted to ask for you know your thoughts on this impeachment moment and and what you hope to see come out of it. And if you have a message, for I mean, people. you know, my yeah. what I would say is. I, I want to talk about what has been happening. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, we do not have the numbers to go out into the streets and make any impact. This is a big city. There's always people doing things. We are getting lost. What we have, what we have been doing is joining other organizations. And, you know, that's really important. Our demand is a unifying one. It is, you know, what it, it, it is what in other parts of the world they would call a popular front, a, a movement of people, you know, our hashtag, we are encouraging other people to use that hashtag. Um, we are encouraging other people to come to our events. We are going to their events. So I've been for the last few days going to swarm the Senate. Yeah. You know, we can't 
we don't have the numbers to be out in the street, but we are going to the halls of power. That is where this decision is going to be made. And we are looking for every single crack that we can find in the Republican Party, in the Senate structure, in the Senate rules, asking people to vote on their conscience, vote, act according to what they truly believe and not follow Mitch McConnell, um, you know, not uh, just blindly follow the party line. That's a long tradition in our country. And, and that's a good tradition. We should be doing that. And people should be encouraged to do that. You know, um, so that is, that is one of the things we are doing. We are also standing with the Fire Drill Fridays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, famous people, important people have been coming to those. They have been with us. We have been there with them. Um, I've met great people there. I'm connecting with them, um, but we need to get people into the streets. Mm -hmm. um, we need to get people to give a little bit of time away from business as usual. You know, that time when you would otherwise be watching TV yeah. <laughs> or whatever it is that you do. <laughs> Come. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm out all the time, but I don't have a job. <laughs> so, but you can come for half an hour, 20 minutes. Yes. Okay, we're going to get a new total. Sophie, as you were speaking, we were getting donations, and, I, and it's unclear because one of them, there's, we just need to get a new total. But we have a... Somebody gave $200, wow. so we have made our goal. Somebody else gave 90 I want to thank you. Somebody else, it's unclear if this is a duplicate or if this is another $100. This is why I'm waiting for a total. But It was 100 but I forgot to put the one in there. So it's 100 a 200 and a 90 Yeah, we did it, you guys. I want to give a right. shout out to everybody. Right. So, Samantha, add, give us the grand total. Let me see it. No, 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 because I actually don't know for sure. Don't, I, I could do it, but I could do it. But I don't know all of the, uh, um, the numbers that actually came in. Somebody also just signed up to come to D.C. but needs a response. And somebody wrote earlier and they said, um, how do I apply for funding to go to D.C.? Well. What we are asking is that every chapter raise the money to support the volunteers they're sending. And if you're not with a chapter, um, okay, we have a total, I'll say it in a minute. If you're not with a chapter, then you need to write, um, and, and we will, we, can't, we don't have the funds to subsidize everybody, but if you can raise some money, if you can pay for part of it, if you can work it out, and we will see collectively what we can raise to sponsor people and make up the difference. But but we're gonna have to, we have a, a form on our website where you can fill it out, you can apply, you can explain why you wanna come, what are the dates you can come, how much you can support, how much you would need. And we're gonna have to look at it collectively and, and get everybody here we can, which is all the more reason for people to give. And if you wanna come and you cannot donate, I mean, you, you don't have the funds for it, we really encourage you to put up a GoFundMe mm -hmm. for yourself, to your friends, to your family. A lot of people give to those they know, especially when they know they're doing something that is not right. just for them. You're not asking somebody to do you a favor when you ask them to donate to send you to DC. You are asking them to be on the front lines with you. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, you wanna say something about that? Yeah, um, it is taking work, but there are people through the struggle I'm, I am waging with my friends and it's who, who has donated so far, it's been all friends and family mm -hmm. um, and so, um, I'm going to continue to do that to keep me here um, and to, you know, to raise all the money I can to, to support myself being here in D.C. And, um, but it's still, it, it is important. Um, and people, if you take the time to make the case to your friends and family, um, even if they can only, some people could only give five, some people could give a hundred, you know, so, but if you don't ask, they won't give it. 
you know, so mm -hmm. it, it does matter and like creating an official page and like writing your story, why it would be important for you to come. It actually, you could raise enough funds to get you going here, so. That's good. And even if you can't come, you can do that and you can ask your friends and you could say, you know what, I want to raise the money with my friends and family to support and sponsor one volunteer in DC for a week. That's $700 and you can put it up on GoFundMe or you could put it up on, you know, however you want to do it, whatever platform you want to do and say, I'm, I'm able to give a hundred. I, I want to get some friends together to match it, or I want to have a dinner party and raise the money or I want to, there's different ways to do it, but to say that you are going to sponsor a volunteer here and you're going to take the time to raise that money that can still be personal, even if you're not coming. Mm -hmm. And it is a look, every time you ask somebody for money, it's an opportunity to talk with them about this movement, mm -hmm. about the goals of it. And there are so many people who want a way to stop this nightmare and they don't know what they should be doing. A lot of people, most people still don't know about the refuse fascism and the out now movement. And so when you go to them, to tell them about it and ask them for money, you are giving them an opportunity. You are also expanding this movement. And it's not a waste of time. And it's perfectly appropriate to go to somebody who's never heard of it and say, I want to tell you about something that I would like to ask you to donate. They don't have to already know about it. You're giving them the information. And for the very reason you think it's important is why they should think it's important. It's not a personal favor. It's for humanity. It's for the people of the world. So um, I want to close by letting you know what our grand total is. I want to give you two minutes more to donate because I have a final message. I'm going to give you two minutes more to donate if you missed your chance yet. If you want to push the total up just a little bit more, it's donate.refusefascism.org. Donate.refusefascism.org. You still have a, few, um, a minute left to go and get one more donation and have it count tonight. Um, or Venmo at refuse-fascism, Venmo at refuse-fascism. And I want to come back and say, just repeating and echoing what everybody has been saying tonight, which is that we really are facing fascism. And the only superpower on the planet. At a time when already we were approaching a, a, exist, a catastrophic tipping point for the future of humanity to be able to exist on this planet because the environmental destruction. Humanity has never lived through a time like this when the, the whole future, and not just for one section of people or one part of humanity, but the whole future for humanity as a whole is actually on the line. That's what we are facing. Refuse fascism has a strategy that has actually been proven to work all over the world. It is to move the one force that has the power to change the course of history, which is the power of the people, to come into the streets and to assert our will from below, to make a demand that we don't back off of. We have, by coincidence, Frederick <laughs> Douglass on the mantle behind us in the church that we are in. He says, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Bring the thing down. He says, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. These are mm -hmm. very relevant words, okay? We were so, that we kept that yeah. behind us. We didn't cover those up with our sign on purpose. <laughs> we are living in a historically pivotal moment for all of humanity, and we have a strategy to move the people, to make this demand, and all over the world, people have shown that if you stay in the streets and you persist and you come back and you come back and you grow, and when you're attacked, you come back stronger and you use that to rally more people, and you make the demand, this regime has got to go in the name of humanity, Trump, Pence, out now. This can create the kind of political crisis from below that compels the removal of the regime. So we have fascism we're facing. We have a strategy. We have two more things. We have a population that deeply, deeply, in the tens of millions, deeply detests this president and this regime. They are learning to live with it. They have become normalized in many unconscionable ways, but they still don't like it. And they can still be reached. And we also have right now 
a series of jolts and crises in society that is shaking off some of that normalization, that is waking people up. Trump started this new year by reminding the world, terrorizing the world with the fact that there is a demented fascist bully with his finger on the nuclear trigger heading up a fascist regime. This has shaken people. It's brought people back into the streets. It's woken them up. We have to seize on this. And right now, this fascist head of state is on trial. And that is not written how that's going to play out. That also has got people waking up in new ways. And it's also unscripted. And there's a fight going on at the top. And we have to enter it from below. So right now, to give money to refuse fascism, to join the Women's March contingent, the, the refuse fascism out now contingents at the Women's March on Saturday to make them as powerful as possible, to support this, you know, to have amplified sound, to reach people with this message, to have contingents that attract and sign people up and to raise a ton of money at them, selling our stickers, raising money with buckets asking for donations. We should be able to raise thousands of dollars at these marches. People want to give to something that is gonna stop this regime. We should recruit people, we should raise a ton of money, and then we should use it as a pivot to recruit people into the rest of this month of struggle, week after week coming back. This week it's the Women's March, next week it's out now contingents at the anti-war protests, followed by mass meetings across the country on the 26th, and then we'll make plans to go forward together even more powerfully. In this wrap up, this is our take home message. This is how, what we're taking out. Everybody has a role to play. As I've been delivering this wrap up message, we got one more $50 donation, one more $35 donation. That means tonight we raised $1,275 during this webinar. We made our $1,000 match. So that's $2,275 we raised tonight. This is a beautiful beginning. On Saturday, wherever you are, if you're coming to DC, we are meeting at 9 a.m. at the southwest corner of Freedom Plaza on 14th Street Northwest and Pennsylvania Avenue. 10 a.m. The organizers meet at 9 a.m., but the, the contingent meets at 10 a.m. Yeah, the organizers be there at 9 a.m., the contingent be there at 10 a.m., and the march starts at 11. That way we're all together. Thank you, Raphael. And I want to thank everybody for being part of this tonight. Sarah, if you have anything else you want to say to send us off, I, I'll give you the last word. No, like I, like I said, um, I'm just thinking of you guys out in, in DC uh, and remembering the fire drill Fridays that were, that were going on when I was last there in DC with you guys. Um, and glad those are still growing strong. But as you said, j the, just the fact that there are so many groups out there that are going to be out there shows that the the hunger is there um, for, for this to be over so that we can do the work that really needs to be done for humanity. And there's a mass recognition that th that these people, the, 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 this, this vile man and his followers uh, and uh, cronies are standing in the way. But what we have to work for in, in out now is the realization <coughs> of how much that forms a commonality between us and how much we need to rally around that com commonality and become, uh, as, you, as you said, a popular, uh, popular front, um, a unified movement with this one single demand. That's it. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, you guys.